Hello everyone, I am Siddharthan. In this video, let's understand how to build agents using PyDantic AI and build a Streamlit user interface where a user can type in their query and call the search agent that's going to do the research and give the search result. So this is what we will be building in today's video and let's get started. So for this, we will be using PyDantic AI and the first part is building this code that we need on a Jupyter Notebook environment to do an exploratory code and later we can build a Streamlit user interface around this code where the user can interact. So the first step here is to install the required libraries. So here we are going to need Pydantic AI which is going to be the library that we are going to use in order to create these agents and then we are going to use uh, integration of the Tavali tool. So Tavali is a agentic search tool where it kind of integrates with these agents in other platforms as well like PyDantic AI or Llama Index. It can integrate with those platforms as well. So which is going to uh, give a tool for the agent that helps it to search the internet for a given query. So in this case the user is asking tell me the top news in the generative AI world right. So in turn the agent is going to use the Tavali search tool in order to do the search and give the result back to the user. So that's how we will build it. So for these you need two uh, things. One is the Grok API key and the other one is the Tavali search API key. So currently I'm using Grok model. So that's why I'm using Grok API. If you're using Olama or OpenAI model, so you can just like choose those corresponding models as well. For Tavali, you can just like go to uh, Google and search for Tavali search API key and you can go to this Tavali.com. So there once you log in, right? So you will see your API key so that you can create from here. So the sign up process is like pretty simple. So you can just like sign up and then just like get your API key and then we can use it. Grok API key is also like pretty similar. Just search for Grok API key, go to the API key section and you will be able to like create a key. So that's the entire process. So let's come back to our Google collaboratory code and let's understand how we can do this. So the first thing that I need to do here is run this nest async IO apply. So what this is, this lets the process to run in an asynchronous fashion, which is nothing but running things on background. So in a notebook environment, there is already a Python running on event loop. So it doesn't allow other process to run on background like asynchronously. But all these agents that we are going to use in PyDantic AI needs to run on uh, background in an asynchronous pro process. So this code helps the process to run on background along with the other event that's present in the Jupyter notebooks or this collab environment. So we need that for this. The next step is importing the required dependencies and the required dependencies are OS in order to save our API keys and then we have this agent that's being imported from pydantic dot agent and then uh, as this is a tabli search tool is integrated with this pydantic AI slim we can import it using pydantic AI common tools dot tabli import tabli search tool. So instead of this you can also create custom tools as well. So let's uh, also in a later video discuss how that can be done and once this uh, libraries have been imported the next step is to set up the API keys. So for grok we can save this API key directly in the environment variable called as grok API key. So when we call the LLM it's going to directly look for the API key in, in the environment variable. For tabli search we can just pass it, pass it as a parameter to the search tool. So you can just save this tabli uh, API keys in this constant called as tabli API key. So those are the next steps. So this is for setting the API keys. And the next part is creating this agent using pydantic AI dot agent that we had. So we have imported this agent from pydantic AI dot agent. So within that you need to use like mention what's the model that we are going to use. So first you say the provider whether you are going to use Grok or OpenEA or Olama like whatever uh, provider that you are using. Then mention the name of the model that you want to use. So from Grok I am using this particular model called as uh, Llama 3.1. 8 billion instance but also you can go to this models section in grok and you can use like some other models just present over here as well so that's supported and in this tools parameter we are we are going to give the list of tools that the agent can use so currently we are working only on the search agent so we are going to give this tabli search tool and pass your tabli ap key to this uh, function parameter and say a system prompt on like what this agent is used for so it says search tabli for the given query and return the results so this is the work that we are assigning to this particular agent. So when a user asks a query, it's going to use this agent to answer that particular question. So run this. And that is pretty much it. So after this, we can just like call this agent dot, dot run sync and just put your question here. So I can say, tell me the top news in the generative AI world recently. So this is going to use tabli search in order to search it in the internet and come up with the response. And this response is saved in result. And within that result, you can access it using this output. So when I run this, I can see the output saying something like this. See, so the current top news in the generative AI world recently includes Bloomberg using Gen AI for enhanced financial data analysis and so on, having the potential to create, uh, you know, all these like details we are like seeing here, like from all the 
uh, you know information that we get so this is how you can create a uh, ai agent with pydantic ai and the main uh, thing to note here is we have used a search tool which is present as an integration of pydantic ai but again we can also create function tools custom tools that we want let's say we can also build a weather agent where we create this uh, weather api in a function and this agent can use that in turn so this is this process so first this nested sync io only applies when you are running it on jupyter notebook but if you are running this in a script you don't need this so that's okay and then we have pydantic agent table search and so on so get your api keys put it over here mention like whatever provider and the model you are using mention the system prompt and then you are good to go so you can just scale this up to up building like other complex and advanced agents as well but the kind of the template remains the same so now we have this base code this is what we need right so we can put all these things in a function within a script and then we can build a streamlit user interface where the user can work on it so here we have a file called as agent utils so here i'm just doing the same thing whatever we have done before the only difference is i'm just like putting this agent or transing in a function so see this function get search result can then be later called from the streamlit user interface when the user you know presses this uh, search button so let's see how this works so we have this right so user has kind of types in some query click on the search button and then it's going to call this function and then we are going to use this agent dot transing so the other things kind of remains the same the one thing that maybe you can change is instead of hard coding the api keys you can just put it in a configuration file or a dot env file and load this to your environment variables and from there you can access it so and we are creating a agent mentioning the model tool system prompts and everything so basically the same thing that we have seen in the jupyter notebook and come back to your app dot py which contains a streamlit app code so here you have importing streamlit importing this agent utils get results search results page config for this uh, uh, you know all this icons and, and names and so on and we create this title using this streamlit dot title and everything and we are creating a text box and the user types in the search button we are removing any extra spaces that's present and creating a spinner just to give that loading feel a spinner will kind of run so it says it basically means that the query is kind of executing and we send it to the get search result and then the agent again calls the tool in turn and we get the result and we display it with this thing so we say yes what i found and then so this is given by this st dot success and later we can say like st dot write write the response if the user doesn't give any query and press enter it's going to give a warning so that's the entire process so it's basically like i have a function to call this agent give a query and get the response and just like put this in this uh, final text box when the user types in and clicks on the send button so let's open the streamlit tab let's rerun this maybe i'll also explain how you can start this i'll give all this notebooks and the code in a github repository that you can access and i've also created a file called as start app.txt so this contains the commands you need in order to run this application first thing is you need all these libraries installed in your virtual environment so we include the latest streamlit version so here i have the latest version of pydantic ai and uh, tavli's integration so once you have this requirements just run this pip install r requirements.txt that's going to install all the libraries and the next thing that you need to run is streamlit run app.py and that's going to start your application on the default port of streamlit which is 8501 and you will see your search agent here okay so let's come back here copy the question that we can that we have already asked right let me put this over here so we see this title enter your query and you're going to i'm going to paste this here and click on the search so you will see a spinner searching and once it has kind of worked so we are going to say like these are the recent news that we got on generative ai so this is how you can create a ai agent using pydantic ai and in the upcoming videos let's also discuss how you can add a custom function tool or how you can build a more complex and advanced agents using pydantic ai so that is all from my side and i'll see you in the next upload thanks for watching